So we're going to talk about what the current energy is for today, what the weather is. And then we're going to talk about how to prepare for the weather. What is the insight? What is the guidance? What is the advice? All right. So one of the first cards that's coming to mind is the Six of Cups. Now, the Six of Cups has to do with relationships. It has to do with reflecting on times of more harmonious periods. It is about connecting with individuals from the past. So I feel like this particular card is coming up because it's speaking of a desire that we all are perhaps uh, reflecting on or um, a bit nostalgic by perhaps of times when things were better or periods where in our life we experienced more harmonious periods or wishing for more harmonious periods a more peaceful time in our relationships we can look at this on the individual level between um, our intimate relationships or we can look at this on a global level when we look at um, countries and societies, cultures. If we look at today more specifically about the conflict that's going on in the Middle East, you'll see perhaps how we could be feeling as though a lot of us are craving um, for more peace. Reflecting on a time where uh, a period or a world where um, Muslims, Jews, and Christians live together peacefully, reflecting on a period in time where there was peace in the land, or hoping for a period of peace in the land. Or I can see how this is could be reflecting a relationship where there is history that exists, where there is a past, and there is a history to the relationship. So this could be speaking even about the dynamic of this whole Palestinian-Israeli conflict. But I can see how this card could be giving us a window into the fact that a lot of us in an individual and collective way are seeking to connect with uh, an experience that feels peaceful, Re reflecting on a reality where in that reality exist harmonious relations or a period of harmonious relations. But the challenge is that the essence or the energy of harmony itself is challenged. And so if there is no, when harmony is challenged, then there suggests some level of conflict. Okay, and this reinforces the second card that comes up, which is the Seven of Wands. And so the Seven of Wands speaks, for me, it, it suggests active engagement. It perhaps suggests active conflict. It's the energy of advancement. We see an energy which represents active engagement, um, a very defensive posture, um, and it suggests um, one who is defending themselves and it suggests defending one's position and so we can see how people are locked in their position and they are defending themselves and they perhaps feel that they stand firm and fixed in their position then they will come out the victor so we see this energy of external uh, things pulling um, at you. So this particular figure represents perhaps, let's look at it on an individual level. This represents you. Perhaps this represents me. This individual who's standing on the high ground, it says to us that we have the high ground. It says to us that no matter what comes at us, we still have the advantage. So this could be the form of bills and responsibilities. Um, this could be just external situations that are uh, pulling and draining at our energy. 
Um, this could be, you know, countries in conflict. Our goal here is to take a position and to be able to fight for a position that feels, that gives you, um, to feel as though you progress. A part of this particular card speaks to advancement. I can see how an individual may uh, be struggling with the whole idea, the idea of advancement and how they want to advance, advance in, uh, in their particular life, perhaps in their career, perhaps in their relationships, um, perhaps um, on a spiritual level. Um, even when it comes to countries and their positions or particular people and their positions, how they want to advance. Um, so this particular card speaks of advancement and fighting for advancement. And there is this uh, indication when you see this card, which suggests that there is a particular energy that it does have the higher ground. It says we have the high ground. Defend your position. You will never regret it fight for what it is that you want. Stand firm and fix on whatever it is that you want. So this perhaps, this energy perhaps is just some type of active energy. We're fighting for our survival. We're fighting for our freedom, our liberation. We're fighting for our sanity. We're fighting for a peace of mind. You know, we're fighting to keep a roof over our heads. We're fighting for gas or in a tank. We're fighting to put food on the table. Uh, we're fighting for our relationships. Um, so uh, whatever it is that you're fighting for, it suggests perhaps you may have the high ground, stand firm. Um, but win, lose, or draw, this suggests uh, you won't regret it. And then we obviously know that uh, we see lovers here coming up as an end of another card, which reinforces this uh, divine interaction, um, speaks to relationships and our ability to um, be able to unify and to become one with each other and to be, uh, to surrender, to, to love, to surrender to, um, a source that is beyond and in and that sustains us. It is about how we make decisions and uh, making decisions that are rooted in a deep divine love that is for the mutual benefit of the whole, the collective. And it's about how do we become one? But the problem when we see lovers at times, the problem that comes up when we see lovers is the ego gets in the way. And you may have one particular individual, one party who feels as though that they may be losing themselves, an aspect or a part of themselves. And so it ignites this type of war of one party willing to... Um, move in a way that suggests love and perhaps even accommodation um, or surrender, maybe another word. And the other party in not able to move, not able to surrender because they are afraid, afraid to lose themselves. And it just creates all type of havoc because in the, in, when you're moving and operating in ego, you are far removed from love. So if ain't no love in your decisions and your movement, then uh, I would suggest that it's creating uh, challenges and havoc in, um, with the other party who you're co-creating with. And so this shows itself on an individual level when it comes to our relationships with perhaps our partners, our families. We, I've seen this card come up when it come, when context of uh, relationships with work, coworkers. But you can also see how this could play out on a global scale in, the, in the relationship with countries and cultures. And specifically now what we're seeing in the Middle East 
and what's going on with Palestine and Israel. And so now, what is the advice? What is the insight here? What I'm seeing is the Eight of Wands coming through. And the Eight of Wands usually represents information, choices, decisions needing to be made very rapidly. So I think this is going to, this representing um, a lot of information overload. I think this is representing, um, perhaps this is probably representing those bombs that are flying pretty quickly in the air. That could be reflective of that. It's going on. But this is also basically about information that we're receiving, decisions that we're needing to be made uh, on an individual and global level very quickly and rapidly. So uh, this is just fast paced movement and action. And it's also about decisions. Um, I think this is about, you know, because I'm seeing the two of pinnacles here. And so obviously this is definitely about decisions. This decision is making decisions and choices. <laughs> Um, that are based upon our, our sense of security. Um, and so we're gra grappling with uh, all this information that we're receiving and trying to come to a choice. You know, I think this is also representing the, the various responsibilities and commitments and responsibilities that we are facing on a daily level or daily basis as individuals. <laughs> and uh, perhaps on a global level scale as well. Um, I also see the high priestess coming through, so I feel like this is also representing um, the fact that um, there are things that are hidden from us that we're not necessarily being aware of. So this represents secrets, things that are hidden. And then we see the emperor, so I feel like this is definitely connected with um, perhaps the government or some type of authority. Um, and regulating authority who, um, who comes to bring forth order and control <laughs> so I, I, get, I feel like maybe I need to say we may need to um, be a better steward of the information that we're receiving and um, but we're going to be called into action pretty soon we're going to be called into action to make this um, to make a choice to take a stand um, to fight um, for um, illumination and revelation of the things that are hidden from us. But at the end of the day, I think it's about us working together. I think the message is really about us choosing to work together collectively from a place of love, which will allow the key ingredient that will bring forth this period of harmony and balance and peace that we all are so desperately seeking within ourselves, within our communities, and within the larger world. So it's definitely about uh, taking a stand, taking a position, fighting for um, what you know to be right.